Wow, how can one person do all that? I said, I want to be something like that. Well, Charles, after reading your life story, I just, I, d I don't know where to start because so many things happened. But uh, 62 seems to be an important year for you. <laughs> yes, yes. Thanks to this guy right here. I don't want to make him big here, but thank him. Not, not 20 years before I was born, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, in 62, you went to see James Brown. Can yeah. you describe what that night was like? It was more incredible night of my life that I never forgotten. It's just that when I went there, they had these two strobe lights on them, had all these effects on them, and James Brown came running out on stage, gliding across the stage. I thought it was a flying saucer. It was just so unique. And I said, wow, how can one person do all that? I said, I want to be something like that. And I had never stopped doing James Brown until I started doing Charles Brown. Now, here you are. Yeah, I'm here. I'm but it's like 50 years later. <laughs> yes, I, yes, yes. That's the craziest thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's bizarre. It, it, uh, a couple of months back, I spoke to Sharon Jones. Yeah. And she has, your, your stories are somewhat similar. Yes. At a later age, uh, someone yeah. picks you up and, and, and puts you out there. Yeah, and you know, it's, what can I say? I'm always like, thank God for us. And I thank Tom for being uh, the one that found me and brought me out. Did you immediately get along when yes, you first we, met? Tom had no problem, never no problem. He, he's a hard pusher, though. Uh, he'll make you learn it. And he wants you to do something. That's one thing about him, you know. He's stepping on that, but I appreciate it, though. <laughs> do you need that kind of, of sometime, push? Yeah. Sometimes, yes. How do you do that? What do you do to, you know, to make him come out as good as he is now? He well, does. I mean, a lot of it's been done on that record, you know, on No Time for Dreaming. Because a lot of the pushing was just, you know, writing these songs together and kind of... Um, kind of pulling out all these stories from Charles and, and structuring them into a song, you know, because he's such a good storyteller, but to put them in the song was a different thing. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I got to push him hard in the studio to get these songs out, but it's well worth it. What, what was the first thing you heard about him? Um, who told you? I didn't hear much. Um, our mutual friend Gabe Roth from Daptone um, introduced us to each other in around 2002 or so. And um, I had a small group together called Dirt Rifle and the Funky Bullets and uh, we were rehearsing out in Staten Island and uh, we had just given Dapto on a demo tape and they had met Charles and he had recorded on a Sugarman 3 song on Pure Sugar Cane called Take It As It Comes but that was all they had done and I don't think that they knew what to do with Charles you know and they definitely were not aware that he could write songs you know so um, so they brought him down to Staten Island and at the time, we were playing like real uh, Dyke and the Blazers and James Brown and the Meters and Booker T and MGs, that kind of music, which, um, you know, Charles was feeling it, which was, which was great for us. It kind of felt us, made us feel like we had credibility playing this kind of music if somebody like Charles Bradley would feel it, you know? But um, it was still kind of contained him to that James Brown thing. And so it took, you know, a couple of years before we could develop it and really... Um, turn it into something original and that took some work and some time for me to put the music together that lended itself for Charles to sing on top of and sing his own songs. So um, that took a while to get together.